Hey guys, it's Ryan and I actually wanted to show you something. This is a project that I've just started and it's a conversion, a cargo trailer conversion. That's where we are right now. We're inside the trailer and I'll show you the trailer in just a minute, but uh, uh, it's a different kind of conversion and I'm hoping that those of you who are here to see a conversion into like a living space, it's not that kind, but I hope you can maybe get some construction techniques out of it. I've been looking around on the internet everywhere trying to find different ideas on how to make this happen. This trailer itself is actually going to be a production trailer, an audio production trailer. So uh, mixing events and things like that and doing even post-production type of stuff in here if needs be. But that's kind of what we're going for here. Now the initial construction of the walls and everything in between should be relatively similar. It's where you get down to like the interior and how the interior looks and functions that's a little different so the basics of this build are going to be very similar as far as we're going to insulate we are going to run electrical uh, we won't be doing any solar because this will be running off a of shore power every time we pull up to a gig so there's no real reason to put solar in yet that might be a future thing i'll probably set it up to be a future option but for now this is just going to be something that's running off of a 50 amp service, you know, shore power. Uh, that's kind of a requirement when I get to a, a gig that I need 50 amps to run this thing. And we're doing that on purpose because there's going to be a lot of equipment in here that uh, is gonna need that extra power. So that's kind of the reason for that. So let's take a look around and I'll show you which trailer I got and why I got it and uh, how kind of the basics on how we're gonna lay it out and then the steps going forward, what's next. Uh, and where we hope to end up. So let's take a look around the trailer. So this is the trailer. This is a seven by 14 interstate victory trailer. Uh, and it has an interior dimensions of about 14 and a half feet on the, on the depth, uh, six and a half on the width, and about six and a half on the height. So there's two main things that we were looking for when doing a broadcast trailer. And you have to think about the area that you're actually mixing in. In studios, they have a very wide and very deep. So usually deeper than it is wide. That works into our wheelhouse here. This is very much deeper than it is wide. Short of going a full eighth and a half foot width, um, this was kind of a more budget, budget friendly version because those are super wide and I have a little truck to pull it, so it wouldn't actually work out too well. I went to a lot of different dealerships that had all sorts of different models and sizes and shapes and stuff, and you can get some where you add an extra foot onto the height here, um, but those were a little out of my price range. This one almost was, but this is right on the edge. So um, this, with the way the Interstate builds their trailers, they have these kind of like C, C channel construction things that come around here and they curve up over in an arch, which gives us, you know, I, I believe, and they, they kind of say this, that it gives a little bit more support up here instead of having a beam that's just straight across. This gives you a little bit more rigidity here. Um, this also gives us a little bit more height in the middle, which is great because that's where someone will be sitting to mix. So that's perfect. And that actually lets me use these angles here. Because if you ever look in a studio, they, they shy away from right angles as much as possible because that's where waveforms can get trapped, things like that. So this will help out with that because we have these rounded edges here, rounded top, and then in the back, back here, we could actually, you know, that's rounded too, but we're, we're gonna do a little bit more with that in the future. So that's basically why I got this one because we got enough width, always could use more, but this is good for this size. We got enough width, we got enough depth, and we got some good height here. Um, I think this will be a good, kind of a good starting point 
for what we want to do. So that's really the basics of the trailer. There's not much else. It's pretty much just a box on wheels, right? It's rated at about 7,000 pounds GVWR, so that's good. We can kind of load this thing up. I have to keep it a little down because I'm towing with a Tacoma. So dry weight on this is 2,000 pounds, which is nice. Um, so I can add quite a bit of weight to this and still, still be pretty good. I'm not gonna be adding a lot, but I will be adding some. I'm probably guessing another 2,000 pounds or so but we'll see what happens. So now that we have this trailer, the first thing we need to do is we're gonna strip out all of this plywood walls because uh, they're really thin. I think they're 3 8 inch thick, not very good at all. We're gonna insulate the whole thing. Um, we're not gonna soundproof it, but we're gonna do our best because I don't think it's really, you know, there's not enough space in the dimensions to actually do a fully soundproofed uh, trailer, unfortunately. But uh, maybe in the future we'll do that on a different build. But with this one, we're gonna tear out these walls. Uh, we are going to raise the floor slightly so we can get some insulation on the floor. Basically, we're gonna just try to tighten this thing up. And we're gonna spray foam it because uh, that'll tighten up anything. There's gonna be a lot of equipment in here. Don't want it to get um, exposed to the elements as, you know, we wanna, we wanna mitigate that the best we can, hopefully. Uh, so I think spray foam is the way to go for that. We'll probably do some additional foam here and there or just additional inf uh, insulation so we can get um, whoever's in here mixing, no matter what condition they're in, they will be comfortable. In the back, probably right here-ish, we're gonna put a mini split uh, and we'll mount that to the tongue of the trailer. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I've seen a lot of success with that. Um, we'll just make sure we have the proper cover for it to, you know, so no rogue rocks come up and beat the crap out of it while you're towing it. We'll put some, some good protection over that unit um, before we take it anywhere. So next up, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll start tearing out these walls. I gotta get that spare tire off of there though. Hmm. Now the other thing I'm interested in seeing is actually what's behind these walls. So the studs across the top, uh, the rails across the top are 24 on center. The floor is 24 on center all the way down. And then on the walls, it's 16 on center, but they don't necessarily match up, obviously because they're different measurements with the 24 on center. So we need to pull all that off and see what we can do uh, as, as far as, I think we'll do some furring strips uh, to give us a wood base to glue and nail to, and then uh, um, also to uh, give us a little bit more depth for the insulation. So. Let's take a look, shall we? All right, here we are the next day and it is snowing like crazy. So I got the walls down as you saw in the time lapse and it looks pretty barren in here. But what's really interesting is what's behind these walls. So they have additional, looks like C channel here um, and it's kind of flimsy depending on where you're going. Like this one's really flimsy compared to this one. Um, because this is where they've screwed in right there. You can see where they've screwed in uh, for the outside shell. So what we're gonna end up doing on these is we'll put some furring strips on all the way down on each of these. And where they meet up at the top here, where we're gonna extend up to here and put a furring strip along here as well, all the way across. So that'll give us a, a little bit more depth right here on uh, the insulation. Right now we're at, you know, an inch. So that's pretty good, but we'll, we want a little bit more on that um, before, we, before we do the spray foam. 
And then we'll cover it probably with MDF board is what I'm thinking and give it a denser material for when we have audio flying around in here. Uh, I believe that'll help a little bit with the low end as well, which is good. We want to do that because this is this is such a small space. I mean, it's it's a big trailer, but you know, it's a, it's a good sized trailer, but it's a small space when you consider it for what we're doing, which is audio production and audio mixing. So we need to be very careful of that and try to treat it the best we can. This isn't the perfect room, so we're going to have issues from the beginning. But uh, oh, the other thing that we're going to do is down here on the floor. So we're gonna do furring strips. They're about an inch off the ground. Exactly. Once I clean all this up and, and then we're gonna insulate down here too. So every probably every 16 on center, we'll do, we'll do the, the furring strips there too. Uh, just to give some, you know, some, some form of uh, insulation to the bottom. So if someone's out at a gig in, you know, super cold weather, we don't want them to freeze their tootsies off, do we? We want them to be comfortable. But then at the front, and I didn't know this, which is kind of cool, is that it's a wooden front. So we have these pieces of, they are, I want to say quarter, they're quarter inch ply as well, you know, up here, but they go in along this curve and then the front cap, the front nose uh, screws into that. Uh, and then we've got this kind of, I think it's plastic or something on this, on this cap up here, right here. All right, so one of the things that I need to figure out is these back doors. Now, I didn't take any of the plywood off of there because they look really nice and I don't know exactly how much insulation they will need. Um, because what we're gonna do is about a foot in here, maybe a foot and a half, we will be putting up a wall. So we'll have like a utility space back here just a small one, a foot deep, foot and a half deep, that's all. And then there will be a wall with rigid foam or mineral wool, something like that, that will insulate this kind of back garage area from the rest of the trailer. Uh, we'll have, um, probably over on the other side, but we'll have a, a breaker box with our 50 amp service, and we'll have an input panel for all the video and audio inputs, all that fun stuff. So I don't know if it's really necessary to do that. I may just put up some rigid foam around that. Um, we'll see, uh, that, that could be an option. Um, so I'm not really concerned about that. What I am concerned about though is this door up here and I didn't take the plywood off of here yet. I don't think there will be much to prep in, the, in this area here. Um, hopefully we can get that um, done. If I do, I'll probably pull it off right before we spray foam and make sure there's nothing behind it that we need to worry about. It's got good um, weather stripping up here. Uh, we'll probably do another layer of weather stripping or sound control, we'll say, right here as it closes. But uh, other than that, I think this is a pretty good door. We'll just pop these off, spray foam, and then pop them back on. They did have that same trim here. but we, Or maybe we'll put MDF in here. I don't know. But we'll put that, we'll put like a three quarter inch MDF up here, which is needed because like I was saying earlier, some of these, some of these are sturdy that are screwed into, you know, and then ones that aren't like this one back here, it's very, it's not as rigid. It's still rigid, but it's not as rigid. So that's pretty much it for this first video. Uh, we are getting ready or we've got everything stripped out and the next one we'll get everything prepped for, uh, for doing the spray foam. So we'll, we'll get the furring strips on the ground, we'll get furring strips along, along these and up top here, you know, on, if I can see that, across here. And we'll just get everything kind of framed in for the furring strips. And then that'll give us that good depth we need for the, um, for the insulation. Uh, if you like this build or are interested in this build, go ahead and consider subscribing. If you like the video, give us, you know, one of these. That always helps. And uh, we'll put this in a, in a playlist so that every time we upload a new video, we'll just go to that playlist. You guys can follow along. Uh, and hopefully you get a little bit of something out of this video that uh, helps you in your build. So we'll see you guys next time.